Welcome to Board Meetings. I'm your host, Garrett McCoy. In this episode, I have the privilege of interviewing my good friend, real estate investor, coach, and host of the Elite Investor Meetup, James Lascara. They don't have to do anything. We manage the whole thing. They're just going to get their return. When yeah, they're it allows you to do what you do at a larger scale. Yeah, and help others. Yeah. His win-win attitude, high character, and ability to connect make him special. In this episode, James and I met on a glassy Sunday morning at sunrise to discuss his real estate career, his time in service, his 48 and 48 running challenge, the mindset techniques of burning the ships, and if it's important, put it on the wall. We moved, we breathed, and we created. I'm Garrett McCoy from Move, Breathe, Create, a Tampa Bay-based coach who believes peak performance comes from a place of peace. I'll stoke your fire as well as teach you to be resilient under pressure. Our habit stacking programs invite you to find your breath as well as to find your flow. Follow along with me on board meetings, inspiring conversations with inspiring each time we will move, we will breathe, we will create with the artists of life. Welcome to board meeting. I hope you get as much out of this conversation as I did. Thank you, James, for your friendship, your example. You are an inspiration. Tell me a little bit about how sauna has helped you and how Kodawari just in general has helped you. Yeah. This is a passionate topic for me, and I think the reason it's so passionate is because I didn't realize the work I really needed to do on myself. I had a lot of just stuff stuffed down, uh, not good stuff, negativity. And I realized through starting to do some of this wellness and mindfulness stuff that um, I probably wasn't really showing up fully for myself. I wasn't taking care of myself. and. I realized through doing it now that you can't really take care of anyone else unless you take, take care of yourself. First. Yeah. yeah. So that's been. It's not selfish. Yeah. A it's lot actually, of people think that it is. It's better because you're optimizing who you are as a person, as a man for me, and now I'm able to show up more fully. And I, like that's kind of been that's evident in my business growth too, um, which I'm, I'm grateful for. But I, until I started going, I didn't even know. So James, what exactly do you do? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So fundamentally, it's I just uh, I'm a real estate investor. I have four real estate businesses. Uh, four sounds fancy. They're just organized by the strategy. But the four are I have my license, so I can work with invest investors who buy or sell real estate. That's just local to Tampa. All my rentals are in one uh, one business. Trident Rental Group is the name of it. And then we have a development business doing residential developments between one and four units at a time. We just sold a project last week. We have two ongoing right now. And then the last business is capital placement for big commercial deals. So all three are Tampa, and then the last one is just national. Okay. So, Yeah, so, I mean, again, my uh, expertise in this area is limited to I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad when I was about 20 years old or something. Or when I got married, I think my dad gave me Rich Dad, Poor Dad. It's a good read. It's a great read. So to me, I think I, I kind of teased you about being analytical. Like yeah. it seems like you can understand the playing field or the game, and then you found where you see there's opportunity. I wholeheartedly agree. When things really started to change for me, was uh, I, I took my foot and I stomped it on the gas pedal with real estate in 2020. Okay. And when I first got into it, so I come from a military background, and it was very competitive. It was me versus everyone. Yeah. And I didn't realize first, real estate is a team sport. So your ability to grow the team, empower the team, give people on your team a sense of purpose is going to help you achieve the results. But also, you can collaborate with people who you otherwise may think are your competitors, and that's going to bring you more yes. in the end. Rising tides rise all ships. Yeah. Yeah. Like you asked me about my relationship with like Keith or with Mike, that, that's how it is, man. Of course, there's a little bit of competitive. We're doing the same thing. We're competing for the same business, but ultimately we're after the same thing and we make each other better. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? So that is just a great idea. Um, and you've done this so well with building the team. Tell us about these uh, elite investor meetups, my friend. Yeah, so I'd be glad to. I love this. Uh, love this I know, stuff, you so. light up. Even when, <laughs> even when you do the social media stuff, like I can tell it's like an exciting thing for you. Dude. Yeah, so I'll talk about team for a second. So I have my immediate team. I have two full-time employees right now. That's been a rocky road of hiring. You know, I've been through several people. I'm um, very grateful for the team now. I like to keep it small because um, I like that interpersonal relationship with the team and we're, we're just more agile as a result. So that's the immediate team and then you have your extended team which might be like other agents you work closely with in the business and vendors, so like my roofing person, my, yeah. my handyman, so those are part of the team even if they're, they don't work directly for you, um, you know, those are contract services. And I think the team extends even further to the network that you can build and grow. And that's been a big focus of mine this year. So the elite investor, we'll talk about that. Um, that started in my living room uh, out of what I thought at the time was a necessity back in late 2020. Yeah. I had two friends, uh, you know, two or three friends who said, hey, what is all this stuff you're doing with real estate and how do I learn more? And I said, why don't I just come over and we'll talk about it for an hour, talk about the debt, talk about the different things you need to analyze to make sure you're, uh, assessing the business properly and so that started in my living room they said wow this is great I didn't I didn't realize all these things about real estate so yeah it's actually pretty simple real estate is simple it works and you can do it too that's, mm -hmm. that's the cool stuff so uh, then we did another one and like five people came and then said well we probably don't need to do this in the house anymore and started using a different building ten people came and then twenty people came and then we started doing that at a restaurant we grew that to about thirty and uh, I wanted, I've always wanted to keep it free because I have a passion for sharing my lessons, that some of which were learned in pain mm -hmm. with others. And uh, so they don't have to repeat the same mistakes. Where it really started changing was, I said, all right, well, let's just pay for a venue. I'll sacrifice the cost for that for the first few. And then when we prove to others that this thing is super valuable, we'll bring in sponsors. And that's what we've that's what done. That's so cool. Yeah. So over the last couple of months, it's even exponentially grown even further, right? So how many people were at your last one? Uh, so we, okay, so we have an Eventbrite page and we cap the number of tickets at 200. We keep the tickets free, and so you're inherently gonna have people that get the ticket and don't come because it's yeah, free, yeah. You know, skin in the game kind of thing. So we sold out of the tickets and I think we had about 130 to 150 people That's, that's amazing. Yeah, I'll talk real quick. I think a big part of it was limiting beliefs for me mm. I was of the mindset of hey you know what if we start paying for a venue and people don't come and finally I just said you know what you have to take a chance on some of this stuff uh, I think I have enough experience and value to offer and the networking capacity to bring other speakers in to have them bring value yeah I think that's amazing and so so each time there's a different panel of speakers? Yeah, we mix it up. Sometimes it's me talking about a topic. Sometimes we'll bring in a panelist. Sometimes we'll just have one speaker. Uh, so we try to mix it up, but we try to deliver what people are asking for, right? So I'll, I'll throw up a poll and say, hey, what do you want January's topic to be? And people say, uh, how to buy my first rental. All right, we'll do that in January. But we have it booked out now for the end of December, like the different speakers. Here's who's it's going to be. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, it's been fun to watch it grow. Like I said, that's a big part of my coaching business is I like adding on to people's BHAGs and, you know, leading you through sauna once or twice a week. You know, I've always kind of kept an eye on what you're doing and I've just seen you continually doing the work. I think that's what you told me was, what was it? Uh, consistent effort produces irrefutable results or something like that. Yeah. Like I was like... Man, I love it. And, and again, James is is a military guy, you know, one of those kind of special military guys. And your attitude and the way that you just say things sometimes, I just, I love your phrasing. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the product of earlier in life, just saying what comes to mind and that isn't always the most filtered product. So, uh, <laughs> learn, I learned a few. Well, and then to give you a compliment, I also see the success that you've had is the way that you connect to people. Like, every time I've seen you meet somebody, like, you're somebody that, like, you want to be friends with, you want to learn from. So whatever you're doing and how you're coming across, I think that's just your character, man. And, I appreciate and that. And that says a lot about your success. I appreciate that. I, 
I think fully showing up for someone is kind of my thing. I think regardless of your, whatever you want to call it, your level in life, how much money you make, how much power, fame, wh whatever, I think I have something to learn from everyone. Mm -hmm. That may be, uh, you know, how to be a better family person, or how to have more compassion for others. I think I, I really do have something to learn from basically everybody. Yeah, you seem to listen very well. Uh, going back to how you got started, did you say you just really got into this in 2020? Did I hear that correctly? Uh, really, yeah, I'll, I'll tell the story. Really heavy in 2020. So I bought my first house in Virginia Beach. Uh, I was gone a lot while I lived in Virginia Beach, uh, constantly either on trips for training or deployed through my military work. And bought my first house and rented it. Uh, while I lived in it, rented it also to a roommate. And it had a term, I didn't even know at the time, the term is called house hacking. So that helped me pay my mortgage while I was in Virginia Beach. Again, gone a lot of times. And I moved to Tampa in late 2019. When I moved, I said, hey, well, let me kind of optimize the strategy because it's doing well. So let me buy a little bit bigger house so I can have two roommates. And uh, in the process, I kept my Virginia Beach house and sought to rent it out. Well, that process of moving, I didn't do a lot of knowledge seeking or education for myself. And the rental aspect of my Virginia house went really poorly. And that kind of lit a fire for me. I was like, James, you're an analytical guy. You're, yeah. you're pretty smart. You, you have a track record of figuring things out. Like, how did that happen? The reason for how is you let it happen because you didn't seek employing the right people, the right strategy, the right resources to make it successful. So I said, okay, well, I better learn. And so once I started to learn, I said, well, real estate could, could work. It seems some, a somewhat passive endeavor. And so once I started analyzing rental properties, uh, starting in mid 2020, that's when the debt became really low. Yeah. We get loans for three to five percent. I closed on, uh, I closed on like six or seven places in nine months. Wow. Yeah, yeah I, I had recently gone through a breakup uh, in mid 2020, <laughs> and I was like, I'm just gonna pour my entire drive and passion into this. Stuff. That's what I did. Yeah, man. And then you just keep applying those lessons and you keep catching a bigger fish, so to speak. Yeah, I think so. I'm taking, I'm skidding my knee along the way. Yeah, a of bit, course. That's gonna happen. But like you said, when you're paddling out here, our friend Dan, you either uh, win or you learn. You win right? or you learn. You win or you learn. That's another one of these comments that James just throws out these like little one like they're coaching one liners, the motivational. I don't know. So tell me a little bit about what you hope to grow or evolve with this, you know, knack you have for networking, how you're helping people, how it's helping serve your mission. You know, what's the, the next step? How does somebody become a James? I don't know if you want to become me. I appreciate the, <laughs> the thought of positivity there. Um, so I don't think I had a true strategic vision identified when we start, started these investor events. Uh, once we switched venues, it's gone more successfully, really, than I could have imagined. I think now what I'm noticing is, um, just to put some data to it, once or twice a day I get a message saying, hey, can James, can we meet and can I pick your brain about real estate? And I can't do that every day. No. And so I'm creating, I think I'm gonna create a subgroup, which is a kind of a paid membership group where we dive even deeper sure. for somebody who wants to put their, really their mindset in business, mindset in life, and then also their real estate resources into hyperdrive. So I think the Elite Investor event, it's, you know, it's two hours in one event per month, but for somebody who wants to really yeah, you should. And, and again, that's what's cool is your your path keeps showing you the way. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. we talk a little bit about signs sometimes. This is where some of that spiritual stuff can come in with the business, right? Yeah. If you are aware, if you are taking care of your wellness, putting yourself first, you can see these opportunities and you connect with people a little yeah. bit easier and better. You have more energy to give. Oh, man. So... If you're, you know, probably the average American, I, I own a home. I've been raising kids. Those kids are, are expensive. But maybe in the next 10 years, I see a way that I can begin to invest. How do you even get started in this kind of stuff? I think the first thing is actually not even real estate. It's identifying the kind of life that you want to live. Okay. And so uh, some people might say, well, I want to own 10 rentals and manage them myself. Okay, that would enable financial freedom. 
do you realize the stress burden that might yeah. put on you or your wife or your family or whatever? And sometimes they realize they do want it, sometimes they realize it may not be the best idea. There's so many different ways to invest. There's thousands of different combinations in real estate that unless you identify uh, how, how you yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. how you want to manage it, deal with it. Exactly that's kinda of like what we were talking about too. It's like I've built my life I've now built my business that my lifestyle truly serves me. Yeah. But I wanna amp it up a little bit. You know, that's now like that investing phase for myself. Yeah. So, Again, going back to that, like, hey, it's super competitive when I first started real estate. Well, no, there's win-win situations if you just look for the right opportunities. <clears throat> and so, we, I'll give you an example. We borrowed and returned a million dollars last year of other people, other people's money who wanted to invest passively and beat the return they're getting in their savings account. Yeah. So, like, hey, how do I invest? Okay, we do private debt. We did a million dollars of it last year. They earned a return they were super happy with, and they earned more than they otherwise would have in their savings account. They did nothing. Yeah. We use that for our development projects, and then they got the money back on schedule. And so that, you look at that versus owning and managing your own rental, those are two completely different time, uh, you know, time Yeah, that burdens. passive yeah. revenue stream. Yeah, so really, um, two of my businesses, uh, the development and then the capital placement, a big core function is opening up the opportunities for other passive investors to get involved so that they can win too. Yeah. So actually our two projects we have being built right now, both have 50 50 partners. They don't have to do anything. We manage the whole thing and they're just going to get their return. When yeah. The it allows you to do what you do at a larger scale. Yeah. And help others. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. That's right. Like I, I hear a lot, like it sounds like an ecosystem is <laughs> the yeah, way yeah. that you describe yeah. the team, which is amazing. Okay. So in addition to being a great human, serving our country. Thank you, sir. You know, that's a special thing to me. Um, but you're also kind of a decent athlete, too. Let's talk about this uh, 48 miles and 48 hours thing that you did recently. Yeah, uh, I've been wanting to do this for over a year, and I honestly, I just like, I kept putting it off, and what I finally realized is just put a date on the calendar when you're gonna do it, yep. and then get ready and train for it. Uh, when I turned 30, I ran 30 miles on my 30th birthday. And so I, something about taking your mind and putting it in a situation where you're gonna have to dig deeper and push yourself maybe a little further than you thought you might have. I think I each time I do that, I learn a little something mm -hmm. about myself and it makes me a better person. And so back in June, yeah, June, about six weeks ago, eight weeks ago, I did the four by four by 48. So it's four miles every four hours for two days. So you end up running 48 miles. So it was what, four, eight, 12, four, eight, 12? Yeah, I started at midnight on a Thursday. So you, you, know, you go run four miles. You can do whatever you want. Yeah, once yeah, you finish yeah. And then at 4 a.m., start four miles again and just keep going. It was, I can honestly say the running aspect, way, way easier than anticipated. And then the sleep aspect, a little bit harder. Harder than yeah. you thought. Yeah. And so then you did this awesome thing. And you, I think we've talked about this book before, The Comfort Crisis. You've read The Comfort Crisis? It's on my list. I haven't read oh, it. Oh, okay. I haven't read it. Because uh, the way you describe this is what they call Misaki. And it's a, every year is what the, the theory is, is you should do something physically and mentally challenging that leads to spiritual growth. And so I like that you kind of come up with your own task. It's not dream for an iron band or do these things. I've got quite a few clients and followers who are endurance athletes. And I, I hope that they realize that they can create their own paths to their own challenges. I love that you, you come up with that. But now you're talking about doing a 50 miler, right? Yeah, so my next thing, I start my mileage build plan next, let's see, either one or two weeks from now, I gotta look. And I'm gonna do 36 miles on my 36th birthday, which okay. is at the end of November. And then I'm gonna do a 50 miler in February. Where's the 50 miler? It's in Central Florida. I forget. It's some small town. It's a it's a point to point race, so it's not a loop. Oh, okay, that's yeah, cool. It's a trail thing, but uh, yeah, I like that stuff, man. Yeah. It, it puts yourself into a situation where this might sound really basic and simple, but you can either do it or not do it. Yeah. And I'm gonna do it. Yeah, and you're gonna and, do and it. And prove yeah. that self, prove that to yourself. I think it opens up so many aspects of your mind of other capacities where you can also do more. What happens to your brain when you are done doing one of these things? The 
48 mile thing. Yeah, once you did that, did you feel a sense of accomplishment? Was there like depression afterwards? Was it what's next? Like where does the brain go? I've heard of that low a few days after. I did not personally experience it. Uh, if you really want to know the truth uh, after the 48, uh, I wondered if I could do it for 96 and like double it. Um, <laughs> I don't know. It went better than I thought it would, so I was feeling yeah. really good. Uh, and maybe uh, maybe that's in store for me someday, but uh, yeah, that's what I thought. And was the fort, is that a Goggins thing? Where did you get that? Yeah, as I say, like I've heard that somewhere, but I was just like, fuck that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You did it. I, I have this thing, I just want to push the limits of my human capacity. I think so many people, they limit their, the only limits that you have are in your mind when you really think about yeah. it. And so, so many humans limit the potential, of, excuse me, limit the potential of their human capacity and this is one way that I unlock more and then that carries over to my life yeah man and I assume that you've always been like that that was what led you to the military and SEAL teams and things I don't know what happened but like early in high school something just just just, just switched for me and uh, I just got really into swimming I got really really driven and ever since I've just I've never seen that did you swim competitively in high school then? And college. In college, yeah. Where'd you go to college? Yeah, we had. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah. What was your stroke and distance? So, <laughs> I'm gonna seem like a, a sadist or a masochist. I forget which is which. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. So my thing was the the events that nobody really liked that much. So 500 free, 400 IM, and uh, in the conference meet, I was swimming the mile. I wasn't great at the mile, but. Again, you found, just like you do in your business, right? You're like, oh, it's easy. Like, you just analytically, like, you see your lane, and then you pursue it consistently and with excellence, dude. I That's what that. I say. I appreciate that. I like the hard stuff. Uh -huh. I, because if you have the potential, or I guess if you have within you the ability to pursue hard stuff, think about how many other people just wave off and they never even think about doing it. That leads to less competition in these matches. <laughs> so. Yeah, low hanging fruit, you eat all of that. And then, so I kind of asked you a question about the race, but we've talked about this in the in the sauna before, is the, the concept of hustle and flow. So you have all of this discipline, right? You're not scared to do the work. Do you get tired of doing the work? Sometimes. Sometimes. I mean, at the end of the day, I have to realize that I am human. I believe I'm way more, I have way more capacity than a normal human. Uh, I have this principle of like, uh, I can do the work of basically three people, uh, I, I believe that. And maybe it's only 1.2 or 1.5 for yeah. the person, but by believing that, it is more than 1.0. Yeah, yeah. Um, I like that. That's another one of those like simple, awesome <laughs> statements. <laughs> yeah. The, I'll tell you a story about financials in a second, about like believing that, and then there's, there's definitely something in the law of attraction there. But um, I think hustle and flow can coexist and I actually did a little content on this recently but if you start to realize that you've been digging and digging and digging maybe forcing it a little too much and your friends are showing up for you and saying hey man like are you okay are you, you've been kind of distant you've been short with us that's probably a good indicator that you need yeah. to take a day and I'm not really big into the party scene I don't really drink much I'm uh just, you know, I, that super crazy social events don't really fill my cup, that's yeah. fine. But maybe that means I, I don't do work that day and I read a book or I do stuff like that. As I say, maybe you have an opportunity to do more stuff like this. Yeah, we're run. Go run. Yeah, we go run. But that's, that's, that's doing the work, but it's different doing the work. It's different. It's that, that, that's what I try, because people say the same thing to me. They're like, dude, you're like always doing something and it's like, it's, it's task switching, you yeah. know? like. I'm gonna be a dad with excellence, I'm gonna be a coach with excellence, I'm gonna pursue my athletics and where I am tickled to challenge myself physically. Like, you gotta keep switching those things. Yeah, I had a talk yesterday with somebody about balance, and I don't love the word balance. Doesn't exist. The reason I don't love the word is because usually it's somebody else's judgment of the balance that applies to your life. Ooh. And I like the word harmony a lot more. Uh, I had two different conversations yesterday, very different conversations about balance. And um, one was like a text exchange with one of my friends. And she said, she was like, it's kind of a lot, man. And 
that's her perception of something that I enjoy. She might like to go out on a boat and drink with her friends on the weekend, and that's fine. Like, uh, there's yeah. no judgment for me about that, but that's not going to do anything for, for me. me. Yeah. And so me going to see properties or do a little bit of work on the weekend and further my life's highest purpose, like, I'm in harmony with the vision yeah. I have for myself in the future. Yeah, it, it gives you energy. And so, so that actually is part of the way that I would describe flow because it's automatic and it's instinctive. You're able to channel that because when the demon of doubt shows up, you're able to kind of stare it down. Usually. Usually. Yeah. You're a human. Of course it happens. Yeah. Yeah. So that, I guess, is ultimately what I'm trying to get because right now it just sounds like you're this like Terminator. As soon as something <laughs> gets hard, you're just like, so what? I'm going to run for more miles. You know, so when the doubt, when the mental health, when the fatigue comes in, what do you do? The demon of doubt is just my term that for a voice that we all have. Everybody has this in some capacity, uh, a little bit of negative self-talk or maybe a limiting belief. I think the best way to look at the demon of doubt is to feed him irrefutable thoughts. <laughs> like, like the, you know, if, if I doubt myself that I could make a million dollars a year, whatever, give him that result. Yeah. And the cool thing about belief is until you really believe that that making a million dollars a year, whatever you want to believe, yeah. right? running 100 miles, running 50 miles is true, you're definitely not going to do it. And so having the belief in yourself and overcoming that friction to be able to do the things, the consistent effort that you mm -hmm. need to that's how I like to handle my relationship with the demon now. I don't know if that answered your question, though. No. <laughs> yeah. You gave a great demon of doubt. I love the I love you the answer. The answer is freaking great. That is A plus stuff. So more directly the question is when you were low, when you were burnt out, where does James go? Do you rest, do you shut down, or do you just give it back into doing? What actually happens? I I'll take a nap sometime. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I like to get together with a close friend. They, and talk about something that's not working. That's good. So you, you seek harmony mm -hmm. by letting go of the tasks and resting or investing in your relationships. Yeah. Right? And again, just like you said, real estate isn't that hard. Guess what? Wellness isn't that hard either. And I know a lot of your military brothers have a hard time with some of this stuff, whether it's doing the emotional work. Um, but it seems like you've you know, been through a lot and you've consistently persevered and you're a good example for people from the military background, getting into real estate, man, you really are an inspirational dude on multiple facets, man. I appreciate that. The funny thing is I don't consider myself at all to I know. be that. That's why I keep telling you. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> uh, I think for a while I struggled with my purpose as I'm transitioning out of the military. Mm -hmm. like, all right, I put so many of my life points into this purpose. You're a life. professional athlete. You are. Uh, you are? Yeah. You are a very expensive professional <laughs> athlete. So it's the identity of when when that thing is done, what's next, and how do you, all that energy, the excitement, the adrenaline, like all those things is is a different world. All right, that's a great, a great little segue right there. Is it on the wall? Your goal, the BHAG, your definition of success. I don't think people even have a definition of success. They don't even know what target they're trying to hit. And James accomplishes a lot of stuff because he writes it on the wall. If it's super important and it needs to occur, it's gonna go on the wall. Yeah, I have a few things. I've got, I've had burn the ships on the wall the last year. I kind of like that. Do you know that story? <laughs> yeah, I like that, yeah. Tell me the burn the ships. Well, all right. I'll, I guess I'll give you my version of it, but I think the really the point up front is if you work hard enough and you empower your team enough, the only possible result is success. There's no other alternative except success. So, Hernando Cortez. This is kind of a, a dark a dark story because there was you know a lot of murder and and savagery with the settling of South America or of Mexico when they landed, but. The mindset thing is kind of cool. So when they landed in Mexico, a lot of his crew had uncertainty about the new land and its ability to, you know, their ability to get the resources to survive, uh, you know, faced 
hostile people there, faced yeah. lack of resources, all this stuff. And so because he perceived their doubt as a limitation, he burnt their ships, ships. to the waterline so that the only possible Possibly. thing they could do is make it successful. Yeah. So. yeah. And, and even if you just interpret that down to like your environment has to be right for success or you have to make it that it's the only option yeah. is success. Yeah. I love it. See, James James isn't an inspiration. He's not motivational. I don't know. Motivation is fleeting, though. So. It is fleeting, but it's like bathing. You should do it yeah. daily, yeah. maybe more than once. <laughs> um, okay, I get to you, James. What do you get to do, my friend? Uh, so I'm going to shout out Zach on this one because something he told me once really has resonated with me. Uh, I get to serve the world by first mastering myself. And so I think that applies in multiple ways. As I look at my life, I had a career of military service, so it applies there. Uh, it applies to real estate, knowledge and education I can bring to other people, uh, some real estate investments I can help other people with. So I think that's what I get to do. I like that. I, think, I believe that's Rumi. I think it's a Rumi quote. Oh, not Zach. He, he stole the, it from somebody they, else. No, no, but Zach stole it from Rumi, which is a like a like an Epictetus or you know he is a okay. philosopher yeah I didn't know that. but our boy Zach which Zach deserves some shout outs he's a good dude uh, that is like his quote you know how you have one but like that is his quote yeah. so I love that you just brought that up so you get to do that I like that for you those are all things that you do what do you need to do James I need to I think this will surprise you I need to love myself a little more yeah, yeah. It, that can be pretty harsh pretty uh savage to myself sometimes i've gotten a lot better about that in the last few years working on this mindfulness and this wellness but mm -hmm. i think i could still love myself a little bit more and then that's part of the reason i was peppering you with the mental health questions kind of like where do you go when the demon of doubt where yeah. do you go in those kind of things because again when you are a doer of things those self-limiting beliefs are still there like people don't realize that successful people so like i am the king of those like People perceive me as confident, like I've got those all the time. Every single person does. But in our conversation before this, he talked about feel, using things to kind of fuel the fire a little bit. Yeah. Like loving yourself is, is a great one. I love that for you, man. Yeah, thanks. Turn your hardships into opportunities. That's I think it. that's what we we're talking about. Yeah. Just make sure, for me, talking to myself or maybe my future self is don't get so hard on yourself in the hardship where you don't truly see it as a learning experience. Yeah, you learn just or you win. view it as a hardship. Mm -hmm. It happened for a reason. And yeah, yeah. It, it, it points you in the right direction. It really yeah. does. Even the way you describe the way you found real estate, or you know that the rental not being what you thought it was going to be, led you to the things. Like it's all part of the path. Yeah. Okay. What do you want to do, James? I want to pursue relentlessly pursue. Mm, I like it. An unbelievable life of freedom and I define freedom really in three ways freedom of time freedom of finance and freedom of purpose uh, through opportunities I create real estate that's, that's what I want to do okay and I know you like to do the hard work but we talked about it even like with some of the discipline uh, I can only go out to eat one day a week <laughs> like how much is the joy or the the doing more things like this or going on vacations or living the life, how much is that part of this freedom or is it achieving these goals and then I'm gonna enjoy that side of freedom later? Like where where is that in the want? The destination is not the joy. Okay. The journey is the joy for me. Okay. So I love that we have this morning of freedom to be able to spend together. Hundred percent part of it. It is. No, and you and you do that well. That is actually something that I am soaking in from you is the back to that hustle and flow conversation again i told you like it was all hustle it was too much hustle yeah so then i needed to do some flow yeah then it was too much flow yeah <laughs> so where is this right line and i think that you skate that line really well that's part of the reason why i keep bringing it up to you because i'm looking at all these different little ways that you analyze that doing versus enjoying i appreciate that sometimes i wildly miss and it's it's uh not at all in harmony but I think I'm pretty self-aware and I try to get back on track. Yeah, self-aware is a good word for it. What will you do, James? I think this is the one I didn't <laughs> I didn't think about too much in advance. That's good. I will, let me think, I will continue 
to cultivate a life of discipline and harmony. Perfect. Because essentially what I do with that get to, I need to, I want to, I will, when I do it with clients is, can I use your words to create a statement that you can brainwash yourself with? Yeah. And what you just said, say it one more time, I will continue. I will cultivate a life of discipline and harmony. Yeah. I like it. And the less words you use, and the more simple it is, is better. Good. Love it. That was, that was pretty few words, I think. No, that is, I think that's right on, and that's right on to where you're at. And that's like what I'm looking, the self-awareness, the humility. How much of the self-love is humility? Maybe you don't need to be so humble, just like what we were talking about. I need to tell people more of what I do, or broadcast, or ask, or do some of those things. I think I, other people give me more credit than I give myself. Yeah. I, I exited, okay, I'll tell you a little story. I exited my most profitable real estate deal ever within the last two weeks. We made we made the most money on one deal I've ever made in my entire life. And I'm like, all right, what's the next thing? Because like, that's what gets it done, right? Yeah. But uh, I think also there is power in giving yourself a little bit of credit. Give yourself maybe a little, whatever, a little treat. I went on a run. I was like, <laughs> I, literally, I think I posted it on my story. I said, I'm gonna go on a run as a reminder, right after closing this deal, excuse me, after, right after closing this deal as a reminder of the drive and discipline that it's going to take to do another one of these. Did you at least go to Chill Bros afterwards? Oh yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Chill Bros yeah. plug. James is your influencer ambassador, if you didn't know. I love Chill Bros ice cream. It's yeah. good stuff. Yeah. Awesome. James, do you have any questions for me, dude? I have so many questions just about, I don't know, what the, the path you're on, I love this kind of stuff, this community engagement. Um, do we have enough time to, to go into it? What is what is your future hold for you? If you had everything you could ever want. Uh, if I had everything I could ever want, it's, it's what I'm doing now on a larger scale. So I really am passionate about people finding in more efficient ways so that they can have the performance in their jobs, but also the joy. Can they enjoy it? Can they find that right line of hustle as well? So generating that in my life through the Move, Breathe, Create channel. Yeah. And getting the Move, Breathe, Create channel to the app stage. Because then and when it sits there, which it's very close, I can sing it from the rooftops. And so as I have that, I want to do more of these nature and retreats and, and, and getting in. I want to do those things quarterly. Those things I do quarterly then are also where I'm going to get a lot of content for the next stuff that's going out onto that course. So I really am enjoying creating, having these conversations, taking deeper dives and helping people do that work. But it's essentially what I'm doing, but I'm going to do it more and more outside in ways that serve and fit into my lifestyle. Yeah. Uh, my kids are nine and 11. I've got eight years, basically, yeah. Yeah. eight or nine years. So I'm looking at the next decade of like, how can I be a really good present dad? Can I build my business to a way that more of my income continually is derived passively, but I'm doing more of these outdoor things that fill up my cup the whole way. Man. Yeah. Well, you've been a tremendously positive influence for me, which I appreciate, and I can't I can't wait to see how that transforms into helping more people. Appreciate you, man. Yeah. All right, we're gonna go paddle somewhere and talk about fun stuff without you guys listening. Bye. Awesome. My name is Garrett McCoy from Move Recreate, asking for your vote for best personal trainer for Best of the Bay. The Bay is my gym. 20 years of coaching experience to invite people to step into their strength. That this strength comes from the inside. It's about more than sets and reps, mobility and stability. It's that performance comes from peace. Connection to breath. Connection to spirit. To the things that you love to do that make you feel in flow. The things that stoke your fire as well as keep you calm and resilient under pressure. But ultimately, it's about your habits. The Move, Breathe, Create channel invites you to find your breath in 30 days, taking 30 days of deliberate practice to work on you, to live on purpose in your flow state. Please vote for me for Best of the Bay. 
and start your 30-day trial to move you creative.